Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am here today to continue my dating apps and websites ranked video. And uh, just before uh, I continue, in case you haven't watched the first part, I am just going to go ahead and recap the other ones, so 15 is Mingle 2, 14 is Facebook Dating, 13 is Facebook Groups, 12 is any site with a pay-to-message system, 11 is Plenty of Fish, 10 is Bedou, 9 is OkCupid, and 8 is Tinder. And the last thing that I'd like to say about Tinder is that um, it, there was there were some memorable people that I found that were just, you know, they stick out, you know, even years later. And one of those I forgot to mention is uh, if you guys remember me talking about Leave it to Beaver and talking about Alma, well, there was this girl on Tinder and she looked exactly like Alma. And she did the whole uh, super like and then match and then she never responded at all for like a year and then she just disappeared. And it was just so bizarre. And that would happen all the time on this app and it it was so weird. But it, 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 I, I really couldn't tell honestly what was going on. Because then she she would do all these other things outside the app uh, to try to get at me. And, it, and I don't know. It was really weird. So number seven is Bumpy. Now Bumpy is basically 95% international victims, a.k.a. Uh, <laughs> dates or cr crushes that you find on there, and I say victims because, you know, a lot of them, they just go through the same cycle over and over again where, you know, they go on these apps, nobody's good enough for them, and then you just laugh at them because you keep on seeing them over and over and over again, and we will talk about the most infamous one uh, coming up. Uh, I'll talk about her when I get to number two, because even though number two is really good, uh, <laughs> Uh, the person that I saw on there was really bad. But anyways, I kind of liked Bumpy when I first started it because I thought, you know, I'm sick of these uh, American people on these dating apps and websites. I want to see what people outside here are like. You know, I want to see, like, is there any sort of different way that they go about approaching things, uh, do they have different standards, do they have different traditions, like, I want to, you know, find things out like that, so, I, I, there's this really cool thing on the app, where they have a world map, and you can just go to any part of the world, and you can click on profiles that stick out, and I really like that feature because if you're in a Italian mood, you can go to Italy. If you're in a Filipino mood, you can go to the Philippines. And it's almost like a an easy like it's it's probably one of the smartest dating app features that I've ever seen because it it it's a shortcut, you know, instead of doing the whole thing where you have to figure out a location filter, and you have to say, like, oh, 50 miles from that city and state, oh, I wonder if, you know, like, instead of playing a filter game, you can just go right around this world map and find someone, and it'll work. And it, it's hard to talk about the people from there because... You know, it, it seemed like there were a couple of people from here who were really, really quality uh, people, but no. And I will talk about a couple. Okay, so first off, there was this one, and she was from, uh, 
Estonia? No, not, no. What was it? Latvia. She was a Latvian person. And things started off pretty weird because she she did the typical thing where, you know, she kind of hooks you in with, like, talking a little bit. But then she started talking about this thing called uh, My Sweet Planet. And it's basically this Russian-Ukrainian scam, this fraudulent uh, organization where you supposedly make money from getting people to shop on a website. And so a little bit of the money that they give to the to the website, you'll also get for bringing them there or something. It's really weird. Uh, but it's literally a pyramid scheme. And so she sent me this video, these links to these videos, and it was just her explaining, like, this pyramid scheme. And it was so embarrassing because you could literally do that thing in the office, you know, that skit in that one episode where... Uh, Steve Carell is explaining, well, there's this business proposition. He, he draws all the squares, and then John Krasinski, Krasinski comes up, and he just draws a triangle. Like, that's literally what you could have done. It was that obvious and embarrassing. And <laughs> it was so funny because she thought that I was, like, interested in investing and then I I pranked her and did something really bad uh but it was pretty funny I mean uh she learned a lesson that's for sure um uh, and she deserved it because I mean it, it's another thing where you know one thing that I noticed about Bumpy unfortunately is that there are a lot of these people that go on there and they're just taking advantage of lonely people and and it's just really sickening that there's been sort of this like market created from dating apps where you know women they know that they can create their little stupid only fans accounts they know that they can you know create all these little uh, tricks and schemes and scams to to rope all these men in because the men are just looking for something uh natural that every man should be, you know, looking for at some point if he's interested in doing that. Uh, you know, it's really, really sickening. And uh, she was a part of that. And she had also sent me a video of this other woman. And uh, she looked like a lot like the, the, the sister from Black Widow. And I thought that was pretty hilarious. Uh, I still have her video of her explaining, and then I have a little video clip of uh, the main one explaining, because they all had to make their little scam videos that they show to people, and then they're like, okay, do you understand? You will become a part of organization now. <laughs> my sweet planet, like, yeah, my sweet fuck you. Okay, so then there was this other one, and you guys should know her, because... I showcase her video a lot on Marco Dishes Out on Life. And basically, this Brazilian girl, she's basically like a... I don't know what she is. Like, she's she's a, she's a dipshit. She is just a complete wreck, disaster of a person. Uh, and she sells these uh, sexy videos... And she does, like, a bundle where you can get all of her videos for, like, eight bucks. And so she was so desperate that, like, I paid her 12 And then I had her also make the video of her shaking around while she put on that piece of tape that said Marco's property. And I thought this would be hilarious because it, it just shows, like, these bitches, you know, they'll do anything because they're so desperate and they're so pathetic and uh, and I think it's funny. And so <laughs> I put that on my a lot of my videos and things because I just, it always makes me laugh. And then there's a person on Coffee Meets Bagel. And what happened with this video of the jiggling uh, Brazilian is just really funny. But part of the thing with those videos was that 
they were so bad. Like, I mean, I am not a, I am a connoisseur of good videos, if you know what I mean. Like, I am a, I know what's good and what's bad. You know, I can sit down and say, hey, these are the top 10 greatest videos that you can watch. These are the top 10 worst videos that I've ever seen. Uh, you know, I know my ins and outs of special videos. And her videos were a disaster. For one, and most of her videos, if not all of her videos, there's no sound. But there was sound in the preview. So she had this trailer, and she showed me the trailer, and basically it covered up a little bit. And that had sound, and you can hear like all the sounds you want to hear. Uh, and it's just her, by the way. But then you get the video, and the video, the same video from the trailer, has no sound whatsoever. And it's just really, really, like, <sighs> disappointing. It's almost like false advertising. And then uh, you say, well, oh, you should do this, you should do that, you should do this video. And she's like, no, I'll just, I'll just stick with these so that's the problem, is that even after I got these videos and I confronted her about it and I said, you know, these videos have really poor production value. Like, you could learn a thing or two if you're going to shoot these types of videos. Uh, you know, just, you know, learn to turn your phone to where it's a wide shot and not just like a narrow straight picture like you know like a a normie would do and she's like yeah i don't really care i'll just stick with these and it's like see that's the problem is that you can see the the amount of disrespect and the amount of i don't know what like just you can see that she doesn't like anyone that she's interacting with on these apps she's just like and and she says it outright too. I need to pay my bills, and so and it's like, oh well, I don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> what does that have to do with me? Uh, but I just purchased that stuff for fun, uh, because I thought it would be pretty interesting to see, like to see like what is up with this BS. And uh, but it's pretty sickening that she goes on there and that she just. You know, and she even says like, "Oh, if you if you're not interested, I need to move on. Uh, if I'm not I'm not here to waste time. It, if you're not gonna make a purchase, then bye bye." And so, really, really awful person. And she said something about like recently she's really suffering in terms of uh, karma because she's pregnant. She has a uh, an abusive boyfriend or she had an abusive boyfriend and <laughs> it's just like you know okay good luck to you uh, <laughs> but then another person was of course you guys if you read my book I called her princess pump and dump and she was supposedly this Moroccan woman and she of course did that whole uh, wannabe blackmail thing and it was really funny because it was this one was really sinister to me because she wasted about let's say September, October, November, December. She wasted about four entire months of my time just to lead up to uh, quote unquote give me money. Oh, I need money for this. I need money for that. And then if I say no, it's, and I said no every time, by the way, I never gave her anything, uh, and I said, you know, I don't care, <laughs> and she said, oh, well, actually, it's because of this, it's because I want to come and visit you, and then it's like, oh, no, it's because I'm sick, oh, no, it's because I have this video that you sent me from the other day, and it's like, oh, that's the type of game you're playing, and so that really, really pissed me off. And the thing that pissed me off even more is that I reported her profile. It got taken down. 
Uh, but the disturbing thing is that months and months later now, uh, I saw her profile pop up again, and it was a new profile. So she has just completely moved on, and she's just still preying on people on this app, and she is using them to get uh, money. Uh, and it's really, really sickening. And so this is the type of thing that you find on uh, Bumpy. Now, there are some good things about the app. Uh, there was another person on the app who I thought was a, a, a decent person, but uh, something happened with that recently where I found out, oh, no, they're not at all. Uh, and uh, I'll I'll probably... I might save that until the worst moments of the year because I just I don't really feel like talking about it at this point. Uh, but let's just say it's another thing where, you know, for for all this time, you know, it was like a complete uh, smokescreen, only to find out blah blah blah. And it's there's always some sort of a smokescreen with these people because they they don't want to tell you the truth they just want to tell you whatever they want to tell you because it's convenient to their truth uh, which is just bullshit so uh, one of the good things about Bumpy though is that the, the customer service is pretty good so uh, there were a couple of times where these bitches uh, tried to get me kicked off the app Oh yeah, and I have another, okay, I have one last person I'll talk about too. And as soon as I sent an email just explaining I did not do anything wrong, blah, 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 I was let back on the app uh, in no time at all. And in both times it was because of a woman too. So the customer service for Bumpy is pretty good and they, they really, uh, I think they pay attention. I think that they're nice people. So at least there's that. You know, with a site like OkCupid, okay uh, back when I had gotten banned uh, for, no, for no reason whatsoever, I sent a message and then I just uh, got no response at all. And it was like terrible customer service. So I will say that. But the last person on Bumpy was another scam artist, and she was a Ukrainian. And now, <laughs> uh, she was really, really bad. And her name was Daria. And I'm going to say her name because uh, she doesn't deserve any anonymity. Anonymity. And uh, she was a, she's a painter, and she paints these little crappy paintings where she, like, throws some shit on a canvas, and she's like, here, pay me. And so, basically, she kind of disguises it as though she wants to find someone on Bumpy, and she wants to get to know someone, but it's really just completely false. It's just a complete front for, oh, well, eventually, on Tuesday, I'm going to ask you, oh, do you want to buy a painting? And then uh, uh, the next Tuesday, you want to buy a painting? And so I did end up purchasing a painting, and I still have it. And I th I just thought it would be cool to get like a, a Ukrainian thing, you know. I just thought it would be fun, uh, like sort of like a a souvenir or something. I don't know, <laughs> like an antique a collectible, uh, like it's a video game, and I have to collect everything. Uh, it was only like, how much was it? $50? Yeah, it was a waste of money. <laughs> but I, I do have it up for sale in case any of you want to buy it and take it off my hands. Uh, the Ukrainian package will come included. So you will get to see this authentic crap package. And it just became a real problem of like, she was uh, sort of playing this game where she would spin one day and she would pretend like she's like a decent person and she would talk for like a couple hours and then she'd disappear for a week and then the next week it would be you want to buy a painting? 
And finally what happened was all, all out of nowhere, uh, she blocked me. And then I messaged her on another account and I said, wow, you really revealed your true colors. And she gave the, the comment, the message a thumbs up and then she blocked that account too. That was pretty funny. Uh, and it was another person who I, I was trying to prank her on video chat, but it, it didn't work. It was actually pretty funny with that. Uh, supposedly, I was the first person she ever video chatted. <laughs> she was a fucking retard. And so, you know, you really find terrible people on Bumpy. And it's hard to really endorse joining this app knowing that most of the people on here you can't really trust any of them you can't trust any of their motives because it, it 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 on the other side you know that it's probably like 85% of the time about money so there have been a couple though there have been a couple people who seem like uh they're fine but not really oh wait actually there was one uh who was really really cool so there have been a couple and uh the one of them she actually has a youtube channel and and i've been uh i forgot about her because she's been really inactive for a while on instagram uh, but she is very very cool so see you can find people on certain places so number six is friended and now friended was a was an app that I basically just used for the summer of 2018 and I'll never forget it because we were reviewing Hitchcock movies it was Hitchcock movie month I was playing Fallout New Vegas while the videos were uploading you know it was a really fun time I remember too I I've got this garlic stick from Kroger and I was really scared because it was a little tiny bit pink in the middle and I was I was really scared and then I looked up oh apparently they changed the 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 guidelines for pork and that you can actually have a little tiny like pink coloring in the middle and I was I was still I was really scared but friended it's another one of those things where you have to question if the concept was even good in general Basically what you do is you create your stupid profile that's meaningless to people and you put up your pictures that are meaningless to people and they have all these prompts. So these these little fill-in-the-blank questions or whatever's uh, prompts about, you know, any topics and you fill in the prompts and you post them. And then people will view your prompts, and then they'll view your profile, and then they'll match with you. And I was really kind of into this app when I was first using it. I thought, you know what, it's not that bad. You know, it doesn't really seem like there's much negative here. Like, it doesn't really... It, it, I will say, though, that the, the types of people on here are not really that impressive. I only met three people on here who I'm going to be talking about. So, first off, there was this girl in California, and she was pretty cool. But she was kind of weird. Uh, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I don't know what else to say because eventually she just she was not active on the app anymore. And that was so irritating too on this app, friended especially, that like all these people would just be inactive and you'd just be like, Oh, where did that person go? Where did that that fucking three week love interest go? And so there was this other girl from Hawaii, she was really cool. And she just randomly disappeared. And I was worried about her too. Because she had some sort of like a scary dream about getting in a car crash or something. And and I don't know. Like I still I wonder what happened to her. I wonder like where she is now. Uh, because 
you know, she was talking to me like nonstop for like a whole month and then all of a sudden vanishes. Uh, you always got to be, uh, you always got to watch out for that too because, uh, you know, some people, they do disappear, uh, unfortunately. And then the last person was unfortunately a scam artist and she was supposedly... And this is the reason why I, I, I joined the Facebook group, the Irish Facebook group. She was this Irish travel editor, and you know she she was a she was a a piece of of a she she was a, she was a golden find, and she really liked horror and it it seemed like you know okay i struck gold here and we and we started texting and then all of a sudden it at one point she just revealed that she was in a relationship with this guy on facebook or something and the guy on facebook was like some random guy like i don't know like it it just seemed really fishy you know, like, I just have to wonder, like, did she even exist? Uh, I don't know. You know, like, I really don't know. We only chatted for, like, two months, and then she disappeared. And, you know, she still has a couple of profiles that are up and that you can... But it, it, I don't know. They haven't been active since then. So I really don't know. It... it there was some evidence that that seemed like she was real but i just i really don't know with her i would say there was like a 50 50 so you know but it was really really terrible because we had been talking for not it wasn't a month it was like half a year and uh you know all of a sudden so friended overall it's kind of like in the middle. It's like a it's like a C minus. I just really don't see the point. I don't see the the specialness of this app. I really don't see the the quality of people either. So number 5 is coffee meets bagel. So <laughs> this app is basically Tinder for goody goody two shoes bitches and uh uppity you know preppy like really really <laughs> types of people and i really hate this app in some ways because of they really showed their true colors and how little they care about people actually finding a date and happy valentine's day by the way i wasn't planning on doing this video on Valentine's Day. Uh, but it just happened this way. But they, they used to have these two features. And I'd like to talk about them before I talk about the people. <laughs> I mean the people. You guys, you know how much I, I ranted against the, the blow up doll women on Tinder and bikinis. Well, the the women on Coffee Meets Bagel are basically like the opposite of that. Like they're like blow up dolls with degrees, <laughs> and both both types of blow up dolls are bad. Okay, there's no type of good blow up doll unless it's a I don't know Scarlett Johansson. Uh, <laughs> that's just a joke. But anyways. They had this one feature, and basically the whole aim of the app is that you have these things called coffee beans, and it's a method of currency, and then you have the bagels, which are the women, which I, I just kind of think, like, what, what kind of a dipshit thought up of coffee meets bagels? Like, <laughs> what the fuck is that like i've literally never heard of having coffee with bagels before in history like i'll have bagels and that's it like i'm not gonna drink coffee with bagels there was this one time too when i was like a teenager 
and I just ate like blueberry bagels up the ass. Just like 30 plus blueberry bagels, mini bagels, just like raw, no cream cheese, nothing. And I just ate these fucking blueberry bagels and they were delicious. And I just sit there watching The Dark Knight on the computer on a Saturday morning being like, yeah, this is the way. (laughs) The blueberry bagel Batman surprise. But the, the whole thing is that each day they deliver you, supposedly, <laughs> 30 bagels for you to pick through and look at and scrutinize. And the way that you can get to the front of the line, if there's a lot of people who like her, uh, is you can buy flowers for her by giving them your coffee beans, And, of course, the coffee beans you have to buy with real money. Uh, Or you get a little bit of them free every day. You get five free beans every day as you swipe through the people on the app. And, basically, what you have to do is you have to wait for the beans to amount up if, you know, you're a smart person And, you know, you don't spend money on dating apps or websites, uh, which we all probably have uh, at some point. But, you know, when you learn that it's bad, you don't do it anymore. Because I think I did on this app once. Like, there was one time where I was really upset about losing someone. And, you know, it is another service where, oh, if you want to get, if you want to fix your mistake, you have to pay them. So they had these two features. One of them, I really, really liked it, and they only had it for like a couple of months. And I really think that it's probably the best feature they ever came up with. And it was this video prompt where it was like friended, where people would post little mini videos of themselves uh, talking about a topic. And there was this one woman, and she ended up recommending the movie vice versa with Judge Reinhold and that was the whole reason I watched that movie uh, back when I watched it and uh, and you know it seemed like a really fun thing because you could actually see people's faces you could tell that they're real Uh, you know it wasn't any monkey business going on with a fucking princess pump and dump Uh, you know you could tell And they got rid of that. And it's like, why? Why get rid of that? See, that's a way that you can tell that they do not care about you achieving success. Is because I think they got rid of it because it it made things a little bit easier. You know, whatever makes things easier on these dating apps and sites eventually gets taken away. Like a lot of these apps with free this and free that, eventually you have to start paying for it because they're like, oh, things are too easy for people to do things on here. So another feature that they had was where you rated people's pictures. And what you do is you'd have one picture and you'd have an alternate picture and you had to tell them which one is better. And it it was really cool, actually, because it was like you're helping out all these other guys. You know, there were all these guys, and, you know, that you could tell that they did not know which picture to pick out for themselves. And it was like an incentive that you would get a bagel for each picture that you would vote on. And each day you would be allowed to vote on, like, 12 to 20 uh, pictures, So that's all these extra, I mean, coffee beans. So that's all these extra coffee beans that you can get. And eventually they took that away. Took it away. And I think it's because they they figured it out that, like, people were doing that instead of paying them for their stupid coffee bean currency. And it's really, really sickening that they they got rid of that because it it was a great, great idea. And 
I do admit, like, there was, <laughs> there was a couple of times where I just abused the system, uh, but I, I, I tried, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to vote for, like, which picture of a guy's looks better, unless it's mine, like, I don't really like looking at other guys' pictures, uh, that's kind of gay, so, <laughs> and then there were some guys and they, you know, they were just completely hopeless. Like, you know, there were some guys, they looked like serial killers, regardless of what picture that they chose. And, but anyways, I really resent that app for taking away those two really cool uh, features. So, one, one thing that's really funny about this app is that I actually found two teachers on there. So I found my freshman English teacher on there, uh, the one that had a beard because she was taking birth control pills. And <laughs> it was making her grow a beard. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then I also found uh, a student teacher on there. And it was so funny. I still have the pictures of their, their dating profiles. <laughs> it was really hilarious. I was like, oh my god. Like, I did not expect this to happen. Like, and of all the people to find, too. It's two English teachers. One of them is just like, oh, gross. And the other one is like a really pretentious college student. And, like, I saw her link, her LinkedIn, too, and she, like, used pictures of her with our class. And, and it's like, when did I ever give permission to use a picture of her standing in a classroom with us? Uh, but that's beside the point. And then I found this other person. She seemed pretty cool. She was, like, a... A competitive eating person and she had like a tomboy thing going on and she also uh read my script and reviewed it and and she posted a review and so she seemed pretty cool uh but i i got a couple like bad feelings about her with stuff that i don't want to talk about because it's just too personal um so that was kind of like a fail. And then there was another one. And now this girl was is really messed up because of something. And I don't know what it is, but it's pretty bad. Because at first she was talking a pretty, pretty uh, normal basis. Like, you know, a couple of days, give responses. You know, just like a normal, casual adult person responding to another person online but then over time she just stopped responding and you know she has some sort of an issue and she's like a hermit and she she doesn't do anything and she just sleeps all day and she she doesn't like she doesn't even go out because she's scared of everything and everyone uh you know so who knows what happened i mean i don't, I don't know uh -huh. But what was really funny and kind of sad at the same time was <laughs> on uh, on Instagram on Christmas of 2021, I posted the video of the jiggly uh, Brazilian woman, and she saw it and she unfollowed me. And she explained that she was triggered by the video of the Jiggly Woman because she just can't do any any like promiscuous, sexy type of stuff. Like she can't even look at it because it's triggering. And it's like, well, wait a second. Like, how is it that you even like see people in public then? Because like you could just see a woman walking around in public with a skimpy outfit, and she's gonna jiggle, just like the woman in this video, and it's, like, just really, really weird, and, but it was so hilarious, it was, it, it, it is basically one of the most funniest things that's ever happened, because my friend 
you know, he never stops talking about it. Like, it is just so hilarious. She got triggered over the jiggly woman. Like, <laughs> and she, and so ever since then, like, she just has not recovered. And another weird thing, too, is that She's, like, really into conventions, and she's really into, like, anime, and it's like, how can you be scared of people and be okay with going to these conventions? Uh, I mean, that would be like Mr. Monk going to a convention of people who like germs, you know, like, that. it just, it doesn't seem, it, it's weird, it's odd. It's really sad, though, because she seemed like a really, really uh, quality person as well, but, you know, she never responds. Uh, it takes her, like, a year to respond, and it's just like, you know, life doesn't work that way. You know, like, you you can't function and make a relationship happen with someone like that who just, you know, doesn't even put any effort at all uh, because they have some sort of a personal problem. You know, but another thing, too is that, you know, she goes to this convention, and, you know, what happens when she sees women walking around in bikinis, these bikini uh, cosplay outfits, like, does she cover her eyes? Like, it's just really, really weird. Uh, and it's just, you know, you, you kind of wish that there was a little bit more transparency, and that, you know, she could just be up front and stay, say, like, you know, blah, 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 blah. But instead, it's like this, like, sitting in darkness and mystery. And it's like, sorry, but I'm not going to wait, like, ten years for a six out of ten to, you know, get over something. Like, you know, like, you know, life moves on. And, uh, oh, Coffee Meets Bagel just texted me. Roses are red, violets are blue. We teamed up with Cupid to find someone just for you. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> okay, so I am probably going to have to make a part three, which I really didn't want to do. But you can guys you guys can just see like how big this how big it is, how big this topic is. Uh number 5, number 4 is t- Tammy which T A I M I and it is supposedly just an LGBT dating app but the funny thing is is that there's a lot of just normal uh women on here and I have not been using it a lot uh I just signed up just to see like what it's like because you know I wanted to have like a full spectrum of dating apps to look at and to tell you guys, like, honestly, these are the best and worst, why, etc., etc. This app is pretty cool, I gotta say, like, it's kind of a a hipsterish app, because there's a lot of, I don't know, like, it just seems like there's a lot of people on there who don't usually join these apps and they're looking for something interesting and you know you see a lot of I don't know it it's just not as bad as the other ones okay like i can see like all the all these like nice uh girls on there that you know at least you know they're pretty normal they're pretty chill but eh. I mean, it seems like you get a lot for free, too. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do on this app where on other apps you'd have to pay for it. And something that's really, really cool is that every day you run out of likes, well, they have this glitch that I would encourage you to take advantage of where you can close out of the app, and then when you get back into the app, the paywall will disappear and you can basically like up to 10 people that you weren't supposed to for the day and then they'll be like oh no actually uh pay us pay us all your money uh and it's like yeah fuck off 
So anyways, that's Tammy. I know that it's kind of like anticlimactic that I don't have any like funny story. Okay, well actually there was one. There was this woman. And now, you know, the Idaho thing just happened, you know, with that guy uh, who supposedly all by himself, he killed four people. Uh, which I don't believe that it was just him at all, uh, never will, uh, sorry, like, you know, just every time with these murders that happen, they're just always like, oh, it was one person, it was just one person, you know, there's no evidence to believe that anyone else did anything, it's like, yeah, okay, yeah, bullshit, bullshit, so, and, and and he was also a criminology uh, student, but this woman looked really creepy. And basically, I will just swipe everyone that I see on this app, and then they pop up in the messages, and you know, then you can get rid of the ones that you you didn't want to swipe, or you can get rid of the scammers because th there are a couple like here and there, but there's hardly any scammers on here at all. Um. Uh, but this woman, she had a really creepy look. She had, like, a tomboy look, too. It, but, like, she had, like, the creepy eyes. Like, that guy from I the, the Idaho killings. I'm not going to say his name. And uh, the first thing that she did was that she texted me, Are you into BDSM? And I was like, Oh. And so I just, I completely got rid of her immediately because I was like, okay, this is a future serial killer. <laughs> this is somebody that, like, a, a criminology student who's into S&M and has a creepy serial killer, you know, like, you know, you know those eyes where they have those, like, demonic eyes where their their pupils are fully dilated and there's all this space underneath their their pupils. And, and they actually say that, too, that, like, if you have, like, all this space that's underneath your, your pupils, it makes you look more uh, psychopathic. Uh, and then if your pupil is fully, like, covering in the eye and there's no white space underneath or on the top, it's just the sides, then, you know, you look normal. Well, she looked like a serial killer. Oh, oh God, she was creepy as hell. And I was like, oh, and she messaged that at nighttime, too. And I was like, oh. So anyway, that is the serial killer. Okay, I am going to try to finish this video. I promise I will try. I only have like 12 or so minutes left before this video will be over an hour. So, number three is YouTube pre-Google. So, what's funny is that YouTube used to be like heaven on earth. Like, YouTube before Google bought it was like amazing. Uh, people used it like a social media. You know, you go on people's channels, you'd subscribe to them, and basically... Subscribing to someone's YouTube channel back then was you sending a friend request to that person. And so all the times that I would subscribe to people, I would I would feel like, you know, I'm try I am becoming friends with them. And you know, it wasn't like a you know, oh everyone has to subscribe. Please subscribe, please like subscribe. <laughs> like like no, back then before Google it was like you subscribe because you really like someone, you really like their channel, you wanted to support them. So, then they had this really cool thing on YouTube called messaging, which I don't know why they got rid of the messaging system. I mean, what the F is up with that? I guess it's because they couldn't figure out a way to censor the messages or something. Like, you know, because they censor all the comments. So, like, even the viewers' comments on the, sh on the channel, on all my videos, you know, there will be all these comments that people make, 
and they won't appear for months and months and months or even years. And all of a s- <coughs> all of a sudden, I have like 10 plus comments that just appear out of nowhere. And it's like, yeah, that's not normal. But people would message each other. It was like a, a complete free-for-all. Uh, it was totally, totally uh, fun. It was like a hangout zone. And that really, to me, dating apps should be like just giant hangout zones. Like, I didn't include any on this list, but d- dating apps should be kind of like a second life type of system where you just go on there it's a free for all you hang out with whoever you want to hang out with and you have fun the problem is that these dating apps they want to contrive things to make you pay the money they want you to fail they want all this stuff to happen so all that freedom is corrupted by them And YouTube, before Google, it was so amazing. And basically, I found someone who was my age, and she was from Kentucky. And she was a a ginger who was named after a character from the Lost Boys. And I dated her for about seven months. And it ended over the messaging... Uh, but she was really nice, so she still wanted to be friends. And then her her profile, I guess it it got deleted or it disappeared. But that that was unfortunate. But uh, YouTube was actually a great way to meet people. It was a great way to find uh, people on like videos. You know, you go down to the comments, and you know I remember one. And I found this girl, and it seemed like she would be a pretty good uh, date. And (coughs) we watched, like, an episode on YouTube together. And as we were watching the episode, uh, we commented to each other in the comment section. And it was like a haunting hour episode about the killer doll. And it was like an actual, like, date that I had, and it was really, really nice, and pleasant, and positive, and, you know, all that's gone now, because of what YouTube became, uh, when they became SJWs, it didn't always work, though, there was somebody really foul, that I found off of YouTube, she was a Hannibal fan, oh, wait a second, did I find her off of YouTube, no, I didn't, never mind, I found her on Facebook, and I, in a Hannibal uh, group on Facebook, but uh, uh, uh. so number two is Hater. Hater is where I saw this girl from high school uh, for the millionth time. I mean, I swear to God, guys, every six months I see this bitch all over the place with a new summary, new pictures, and she's just looking worse and worse and worse. She used to be like a, let's say like a, uh, like a, like a, like a, a 9.5 out of 10. And now she is like a 5 out of 10 at best. Because, you know, her, her true colors, you know, they're all coming out, you know, her true personality. (coughs) Sorry, I don't know why that's happening. I think I just... I'm not drinking enough fluids in this video. You know, she's starting to look like what she's like on the inside. And she's just full of shit. And, you know, it's so funny to see her over and over and over again. She was also the one I saw in the parking lot. And, of course, I saw her on Hater. And guess what? 90-something percent match. Nope. Not going to match back. And so, see, that's what I mean about these dating apps and services being so useless. Is that these people, they see that even though they're a 97% match with you, they don't care. And, like, there's just something wrong with that. Like, why wouldn't you 
care when that's the whole point of the service, you know. The whole point of Hater was that they had all these topics, and you swiped left or right on the topics, and then they created a percentage with other people of, like, how much you agreed with them on topics, and then you'd swipe on the people, like Tinder, and there wasn't really much that you could pay for, and it was just a really, really nice service, because... It really felt like all the people on there were just all these really cool people who weren't really on dating apps or websites at all, but they were all on Hater. And I just thought, like, where did these people come from? Like, Hater was, Hater was awesome. I don't understand why Hater uh, went away because it was so good, and it was my favorite app. If it was still around today, I would still be using it because it was that good. Like, I can barely remember people on there that, like, would stick out to talk about. There was one person, and she was a biatch. She was the only bad person on the whole app. And she was another person who led me on for, like, a couple of weeks. And so then I got her back, and I basically trolled her for like a couple of weeks, like non-stop, all day long. And it pissed her off so much, she was so befuddled, because I put on such a strong performance, trolling her and making her think a certain way. Uh, she never, she'll never forget it, that's for sure. And she deserved it, because of what she did. And so that was that was the only and she was like a Lithuanian uh which I guess I don't know about Lithuanians like that's the only Lithuanian I've ever interacted with on a, a dating website so and I still have her picture too because, because it's funny to laugh at her once in a while I mean she's pretty bad she was really really bad like I don't want to get into specifics too much with all these people because I'm trying to stress I'm trying to stress the apps, not necessarily the people. But in general, Hater was an incredible app. Number one is VampireScene.com. Now this website, let me tell you guys something. If I was rich and famous when I was using this website, I would have sh- I would have sued the living shit out of this website and the living shit out of people on this website because i don't i don't know how it existed like guys this this app was this website was insane it it was insane the things that went on on this website it is so crazy I can't, I don't even want to talk about, because it would just be like hours and hours of me telling you guys, like, (laughs) some really crazy stories, like, you know how, you you know that, that, the Wolf of Wall Street, the Stratton Oakmont uh, place, it was like that on a website, website form, with teenagers and young adults and older adults who like vampires <laughs> uh, you guys see what I mean like <laughs> I I am probably gonna be making like a whole movie about it like just a whole movie about this website it is that screwed up but the thing that I loved about it and the thing that made me want to put it at number one is that it was a free for all there was no moderation there was no reporting people there was no blocking people you could not block people's profiles you could create an infinite number of accounts there was no verification i mean it oh <laughs> it was it was like just anarchy and chaos it was insane. 
and I found so many like interesting and unique characters from that place, and uh, so many just like wow, really real real pieces of work and real like evil people. I mean, you want to talk about evil people? The people on Tinder pale in comparison to how evil the people on this vampire scene website were. And uh, it changed since then. You know, I think that some of the people in the higher-up positions, I think they realized they made a big boo-boo, and they wiped all the chat history, and they wiped off all the profiles or something, and they basically sanitized the website now, and they sterilized it, and you have to pay to do anything. You have to pay to message people, which back then... You did not have to pay to message people. That's for damn sure. And I was a I was a little player on this app. Like I I I admit, like I had a different girl for every hour of the day on this website. Like it was like in the producers at the beginning, where Zero Mostel he's got like all the pictures of the old women. Like I had a schedule down pat. In the morning, it was two people from Norway, one person from England. After school, it was this one person from Japan, and this other person, this other person. And it was like, it, it, it got up to like 35, 36 girls at once. Like, it, <laughs> it was insane. It was so insane. Like, there were some days, like, where... I would just skip school and talk to the people on this website. And, you know, there was this one day where I talked a girl uh, out of committing suicide. And I said, you know what, I'll, I'll skip today. I'll skip school today as long as I can make sure that she doesn't uh, go through with it. I guess that was kind of a waste, though, because she turned out to be a bitch. <laughs> I mean, okay, it wasn't a waste, but... Uh, you know, just all the people on this website, though, eventually they all showed their true colors. You know, there wasn't really ever a decent person on this website. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of evil on this website. I mean, there was a lot of weirdness. And just, I could dedicate a whole video. But that's the thing, though, is that I'm I'm kind of glad Because even though there was a lot of terrible stuff, like, that you came across on this website, like, terrible encounters, terrible people who would, you know, abuse your trust, and, you know, gossip, and all this stuff, I love that it was a free-for-all, and that, you know, there wasn't this control. You know, it was like, it was like the inmates running the asylum, you know, it was like a complete... It, it it was like everyone would come on there and they were all letting loose from, you know, all the other problems that they had. And I really, really liked that. Like, it just, it was really cool. So, yeah. Vampire scene, number one place. And to be honest, though, like, if I would do it all over again... I would still go on that website, honestly, like, I would have probably gone even harder, too, like, I would have totally, totally done things differently, though, because, you know, now I look back and I realize, like, I was pretty cringeworthy at some points, but the website overall was really, really good, and I really wish that if dating sites and apps would exist that they would be free-for-alls like this, with, like, a little bit of, like, moderation, you know, to make sure that there wasn't some evil shit going on, you know, like, a little bit of moderation, but other than that, like, just have it be a free-for-all, like, that's why when people complain about Twitter, and they complain about, I don't want to see hate speech on Twitter, wah, it's like, ugh, You have no idea what Vampire Scene was like in 2011 to 2000, 
14, 15, 16. Okay, like, <laughs> you have no idea what chaos is like. So anyways, please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of my rankings, and if you would agree. And then please subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more honest videos. Goodbye everybody, see you soon.